We think of dragonflies as delicate and glittery, but research shows they're actually vicious and voracious predators. Joining me to explain is Professor Jessica Ware of Rutgers University. How does the actual reality of the dragonfly differ from the image that most uh, lay people have of the insect? They're on t-shirts, jewelry, rings, very heavy duty fashion items. But they're actually voracious predators. So you'd never see a dragonfly in a dragonfly earring eating the face off of a butterfly. But that's what they do. They use their mouth parts to bring the food in and then these jaws open and close and macerate the prey. Even the, the fine body, the, the narrow slender um, damselflies that you see beside a pond, those can take down things in the air with spines on their leg, just bringing food in, as munch, 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 as they fly. So we think of them sometimes as butterflies, but they're not really, what's a better animal comparison? They're really more like lions, you know, they can stalk their prey, um, they have, they're visual predators, they have excellent eyesight. So there's some work that, that's been done that shows that they can predict where their prey is going to be in three seconds and fly to that spot wow. so that they can catch them. Now what, what are the applications, uh, both kind of in the insect world and then beyond it? Well, some of the research that we're doing about insect flight behavior, dragonflies in particular, informs us of better ways to fly, faster ways to fly, maneuverability is something... they can fly backwards and upside down. They've been doing this for a long time, for about 350 million years. They have perfected flight. They've perfected different styles of flight, long distance migration, short distance flight, repeated taking off and landing, things that we can't really do very easily today. So they were back in the time of the dinosaurs and dragonflies were had wingspans as long as your arm. Some of them actually had beaks. The thing that people don't really realize is that the dragonflies that were present back then were terrible flyers. So even though they were large, um, they hadn't perfected some of the, you know, gliding and, and dragonflies nowadays can turn on a dime. So what are some of the questions that the research has yet to, to answer? Some of the things that we're still trying to figure out is how and why dragonflies migrate long distances. There's been stuff in the, in the news recently about dragonflies that migrate across the Indian Ocean. And it's you know, hundreds, thousand miles. Yeah, hundreds of thousands of them throw themselves out on this journey and very few of them survive. How is that evolutionarily adaptive? We know something about where dragonflies were in the past. They have a very good fossil record. Because they're colorful and beautiful, we actually have a lot of historical records of where they've been found. In in recent history, you know, by humans. And so we can try and use fossil information and their current distributions to make predictions about where they're going to be found as, as, climate, as climate warms. And we see a trend, things that you used to only be able to find in Northern Africa that you can now find in Sweden. We see a trend that dragonflies are moving northward. And what does that mean for, northern, for dragonflies that are adapted for northern climates? Um, will they go extinct? What does that mean for the changing biodiversity of these regions? All right, we'll, we'll have you back to find out. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs>